So the breakfast and plus TV Africa, and we're looking at a second conversation. We'll have a live guest, but let's just go through the background of the conversation. The Nigerian economy recorded a seven consecutive quarterly growth in the second quarter of 2022 as real GDP, that's gross domestic product, expanded by 3.54% year-on-year-on, an improvement compared to 3.11% growth recorded in the previous quarter. Although lower than uh, the 5.01% growth printed in the corresponding period of 2021 in terms of aggregate real GDP, it stood at 17.29 or 29 trillion naira, representing a quarter on quarter on decline when compared to 17.35 trillion recorded in the first of 2022. Interesting to note that road transport coal mining, uh, Nigeria's fast-growing sector in the second quarter of uh, 2022. We do have a guest joining the conversation, Bolnaho Lujide. He's the executive director of DMA Advisory and Management Services Limited. Uh, Lujide, it's good to have you join us this morning. Let's share your thoughts on this development. Apparently, 28 sectors of the country are struggling, and we have actually lost a lot. What are your thoughts? What do you make of this development? Um, there are two key, two major scenarios uh, we can look at. There is a global part to the problem we are seeing, and there is a domestic part. The global part has to do with the fact that whether it is America where there is 40-year all-time inflation, or Germany, where there is a 30-year all-time inflation, across the world, there are economic problems. The other part is the fact that as there is inflationary pressures across the world, you have uh, uh, the Fed's raising rates. When they raise their rates, it constrains the amount of investment that can come into an uh, emerging market like ours. Then you have the energy crisis, which is also global. So there is the, uh, uh, the fact that we've seen the prices of uh, crude on the international market go up dramatically. And by so doing, you have the effect on things like diesel, aviation fuel, and everything along that chain, the prices have gone up. So that's, that's another part. The other part from the global side is also the agri sector. So in the agri sector, you have a, 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 a country like Russia is a major fertilizer exporter in the world, has been involved in a war. And there are impact, there are impact along all that line, even across Europe. Germany, Belgium now is shutting down certain manufacturing concerns because of gas problem. Uh, Germany is rationing power. So all these things are there at the global scale. Then on the domestic scale, we have our own internal problems. So for a country that is dependent on importation, we have gone ahead to import some of the crisis from all those countries we're speaking about. So you are importing food from a country where inflation is at a 40-year high. You're also importing part of that inflation. So we have that problem. We also have an issue with our internal insecurity issues, which is affecting food. When you look at the bucket of inflation, the, the, the inflation figures that we have, and you see the chunk that is contributed by food, you begin to understand how all of these things are interwoven and is creating pressure on us. Our foreign exchange uh, 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 regime is not helping matters. Recently, it was the uh, aviation people that were, you know, and we had to release money for that. Once aviation start getting affected, it impacts your economy. Uh, we saw a situation when domestic airlines started to reduce the number of flights because of aviation fuel. While you see transportation, you know, grew in that report that you just read now, it did not grow on the side of the consumers. It grew on the side of the people who have transferred entirely their increased cost onto the consumer. So uh, moving goods from, say, uh, Kebi, to Lagos, that used to be 200,000, it's now 500,000 naira. And the guy that is going to sell it at the other end just take the entire increase in cost profile and offload this onto the consumer. The consumer, because his own income has not grown commensurably, is unable to purchase as he used to purchase. So all these things are curtailing and constraining the economy. 
of Nigeria. That is why you have quarter and quarter uh, being bad. Whereas if you take year on year, it's not bad because 2021, we're just recovering from COVID-19. So uh, yeah, when you look at the, the base comparison year, it is a low year. We're just coming out of a problem. Mm. You've taken the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I was about to ask you about this year-on-year uh, uh, -year issue. Um, uh, you know, so 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 you're saying that the quarter-on-quarter uh, GDP figures released by the National Bureau of Statistics are what we should look at quarter on quarter, not year on year. Because I was about to say, are we not um, being alarmist and overreacting, no. you know, for want of a better word? We we should look at both. What, what the year-on-year -year is telling us is that the level of activities relative to 2021 has increased. In 2021, we were just coming out of COVID. Things were just teaming up. In 2022, things, activities have continued to increase. That is the message there. And that is why the GDP numbers we see uh, are better than last year. But if you want to see our progression, you come to the quarter-on-quarter. -quarter, and then you begin to see how we have not done as well as we did in quarter one. Uh, what, what we did in quarter two was poorer than quarter one. And the, 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 it's, it's easy to see as all those crises have continued to constrain our capacity uh, to expand or to perform. Great. All right, but, but let's also look at this now. The economy recorded a seventh consecutive quarterly growth in the second quarter. That's of uh, you know, 2022 as the real GDP expanded by... 3.54% on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, according to, you know, the report is that it's an improvement to the 3.11% growth recorded in the previous quarter. But I'd like to ask you, what does this translate to? What does this mean for us as an economy? Well, for us, when you take a look at the year-on-year -year issues, of course, you mentioned seven consecutive quarters, right? That is taking it all the way from 2020. In 2020, there was a slump. So anything you're doing post-2020 will record an improvement. And that is what we have seen. That is why we have all those seven consecutive quarters of growth. But when you want to begin to look at a, a shorter period, that's when the problem starts to sink in. So you look at a quarter on quarter. You compare quarter two, 2022 with quarter one, 2022. And you begin to see all those impact of uh, uh, energy crisis, food crisis, they begin to really. By next quarter report, for example, there is, there is likelihood that we will, there will still be a growth when you look at it year on year. But it is the quarter on quarter that we will likely see the so problem. So it's a much a more situation of um, you, you sort of go, go so low that, like, that the only way to go is to go up. Is it, that, that was what happened. That's, that's all the year on year is telling you. All right. Yeah. All right. So, so um, 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 let's look at the individual sectors now. Um, according to the data from, from the NBS, the agricultural sector, because we're talking about 28 sectors, um, but apart from that, the other sectors that did, didn't do badly. So, we look at all of them. The agricultural sector witnessed mixed positives. Um, you have two subsectors under the agri sector, and the NBS has done a good work of um, highlighting these. Um, you have crop production. Uh, 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 growing, livestock declined, forestry grew, while fishing declined. Um, so it's a mixed bag for the agri sector. Correct. What do you think is responsible for this, that um, crop production is able to grow in a time of um, uh, Boko Haram you know, insurgency, in time of banditry, uh, in a time when you're having, a, what do you call it, um, a lot of these farmers leaving their homes you know, to go uh, as refugees and they're, they're running away. Uh, so what do you think will, will be response? Because it seems like it's something strange happening when we hear that farmers are running from their farms. They can go up north in the middle belt. So while we're we having crop production growing uh, and forestry growing, and then, of course, fishing, uh, which is in the southern part of the country, declining, and uh, we have um, uh, livestock also as well declining. Okay. Um, crop production will naturally grow because of the seasonality. In the quarter one, which is January to March, there is even no rain going on. So what you have, in fact, when you take a product like maize, the peak price of maize is, as, as, as you start to go into the year, the price starts to increase. January, February is higher. March is higher than February. But then by the time the rain starts to come in, which is the second quarter, we begin to plant. In fact, by the end of that second quarter, maize is already, in fact, 
by middle of, of that second quarter, maize is already out. Mm. You know, so in terms of production, uh, we are likely to uh, uh, to get the kind of response we got by virtue of this seasonality of, of what, what we're looking at. So that is what is likely driving uh, the crop production growth that you look at. Well, for the want of time, quickly, let's share the thoughts of uh, you know the chief executive officer, Center for Promotion and uh, Private Enterprise, Dr. Muta Yusef. He said that uh, productivity and competitiveness issues had continued to negatively impact on performance across the sector of the economy. Correct. And he cited an example that, you know, uh, you know, the general operating environment of the nation was very challenging for most investors. I like that you, you know, expand on that. Do you agree with him? That's number very, one. Is, and then secondly, right on that. what are really these issues that are impacting, you know, on investors, especially small scale business Enterprise. Uh, both both, small, small, medium both small, medium scale, and even the big ones are being impacted. For the big ones, you just take when you take the aviation example, it explains what the problem is. Someone has brought this money, he has earned money in your economy. He needs to take money back. He cannot take the money back. So, what's my encouragement? Why should I want to continue to operate in that kind of an environment where when I bring my money, I cannot take my money back? Though, thank God, CBN has intervened in that particular issue by providing dollars. But those are the kind, kind of problems that we're talking about. When you go to the manufacturer, it becomes a major problem. People want to import raw materials. And the process, the, the, the getting foreign exchange to do this thing is a torture. People open LCs and they can't even get dollars to pay the supplier. You will be getting bits and pieces of dollars over an extended period of time. So, very quickly, please. Yeah. Uh, the manufacturing sector, according to the MBS originally, see, they come up with 13 subsectors on the manufacturing. Now they're saying out of the 13 subsectors, 10 experienced a decline while only three, you know, grew. You know, uh, so what, what is what do you think has been going on uh, with the manufacturing sector, seeing a massive uh, decline in, in GDP? Part part of it is what I've just mentioned, the fact that people cannot get access to dollars. You do an LC today, when it comes to time for you to pay down on that LC and you go to bid, you have uh, decided to put in for a million dollars and then they give you 100,000. And then you continue to get 50,000, 100,000 for the next one year for you to be able to pay down on a $1 million transaction. How do you, how do you expand it? Uh, are the inflationary pressures we have in like, I mean, ordinary regions, is that also something that could affect the manufacturing sector? Hmm. Because well, at the end of the day, they produce and they... they their capacity yeah. to buy. The consumer must have enough disposable income to consume. Okay. If it doesn't, it limits what it can buy. And then you have to inventory start to pile up. So it, it invariably affects them. Correct. Very quickly, before, before we go, no, well, solutions now, because well, of time. Yeah, okay, mercy. Go. Yeah, no, just as quickly, because mm -hmm. we're out of time. Yeah, I can guess. With yeah. the solutions, I'm sure that's... that's what, what, what do we need to do to fix all for, for, for most of the uh, global problems, we have no major control over them. Uh, but there are some that are within our domestic environment. Insecurity, for example, we need to do more on the side of insecurity that more farmers could go to the farms and they can produce food for us. We need to do more around our foreign exchange policies so that people can have access to dollars and be able to import what they need to import. Of course, that has uh, various time horizons. You can have the short term, the medium, and, and the long term things we need to do uh, to, to make that happen. But our focus should be on things within our control not Russia, Ukraine war. All right, we need to go. Thank you so much. Bunlaho uh, Lujide. The pleasure is mine. Bunlaho Lujide is the executive director of DMA Advisory and Management Services Limited. We appreciate your time with us. Uh, thank you so much for spending time and sharing. I wish we had more time because I mean, we have several questions to ask. But that's it on the breakfast. If you missed out on any part of it, it will be all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Word Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bofo. And I'm Kofi Bartels. We return tomorrow with more on The Breakfast. Good morning.